In this video, we're going to lay out the views for our tip calculator application. In particular, we're going to lay out eight views where the four text views or labels on the left will describe the contents of what is being shown on the right. The first thing we'll do is open up Android Studio. And then I have it running here. Version 3.5.2 is the latest stable version of Android Studio as of today. But as long as you're on a uh, latest stable version, you should be fine. Let's create a new Android Studio project. And the first option you have here is what kind of starter project do you want to create? And almost always I go with empty activity. The other options are useful sometimes, but they add a lot of starter code into your project, which could be confusing. And so almost always I go with empty activity. Tap on next, and then let's name our application Tippy. The package name is fine. You can save it to whatever location on your computer that you like. Make sure the language is Kotlin. And then minimum API level, I'm setting it to API 21. Now you can tap on finish. And the first time that you build your application, this might take some time. What I like to do whenever I have a new project, the very first thing I like to do is just run the starter code. Make sure that the starter code is able to actually compile and build properly so that we know that any changes we make from here on out, we're starting from a known good place. So in order to run this starter code, what you need to do is go up to this green triangle and tap on that. And I already have an Android virtual device set up, which is an emulator, which is a Pixel 2 running API 29, the Android API 29 version. You can see I have a bunch of emulators, but 29 is fine. So if I tap on that icon, you can see that this emulator boots up. And at the bottom, you can see that Android Studio is trying to build our project. And it will eventually push our simple starter code onto the app. And you can see that it worked. So we have our app called Tippy, and it shows Hello World. It's worth spending just a bit of time understanding what is the starter code that Android Studio gave to us when we tapped on the empty activity template. There are two main files that we'll be interested in. One is mainactivity.kotlin and the other is activitymain.xml. And you can see that mainactivity.kotlin is where we are defining the activity and all the business logic associated with our activity will go in this file. So things like being able to understand when the user has changed the tip percentage and we need to recalculate the tip in total, we're gonna to put all of that logic in here. One important line is the set content view where we say r.layout.activitymain. This is referring to the activity main.xml. So what that line is saying is the contents or the user interface, the UI of our application is going to be defined as activity main.xml file. Let's give ourselves a bit more room to work with here. So you can see that it's a very simple view. It's a constraint layout, that's the root element. And then inside of the constraint layout, there's a text view called hello world. So a text view in Android, you can think of it as a label. So the user can't edit it. It's basically just a view which shows some text. What we're looking at here is a graphical way of editing the user interface. So you can drag out different text views, you can drag out buttons, things like that. This is really useful and we'll spend a lot of time doing that. But we also will sometimes need to be a bit more precise with the changes we're making in our in our layout. And so for that, you can notice at the bottom, we have two tabs, the design and text tab. And so usually what I, what I do is I'll make high level changes in the design tab. And when I want to make more precise changes, there's actual text representation in XML for the UI. And for that, we can go into the text tab. And there's actually a shortcut to go between the design text tab, which is control shift and then the arrow keys, left or right arrow. And so because we'll be going between these quite a bit, it's worth remembering that shortcut. Now that we have an understanding of the starter code, we can take a look at our completed project to see how we can start building the UI toward this. So don't worry about the description for the tip percentage or this footer at the bottom. We're only going to worry about the eight other views at the top of the screen. There's four on the left side and four on the right side. All of these views are going to be contained in something called a constraint layout, which is the root element by default when we created our Android Studio project. So constraint layout, looking at the Android developer website, allows you to create large and complex layouts with a flat view hierarchy, no nested view groups. The idea is that the constraint layout lets you position views inside of it by using constraints and chaining these constraints together with other views. So this is a really powerful system, but it's also pretty easy to use. 
So one of the reasons why constraint layout is the recommended way to um, create your UI is because it helps us create flat view hierarchies, as the documentation says. In order to have the best app performance, you want to limit the depth of views. Having a very deep layout hierarchy means that the Android system has to spend more time in measuring, laying out, and drawing your view, which will lead to a much worse user experience. What we're going to do is construct our UI in a single constraint layout with depth of view as one, which is as good as you can get. There's not going to be any linear layouts, relative layouts, or other view groups inside of our parent view group. So even if you haven't actually used a constraint layout before, just based on how you think it might work, which is constraining views relative to other views, spend a moment to think about how might you construct the UI shown here? How might you position these elements relative to the other elements around it? So once you have an idea in your head, let's switch over to Android Studio and actually start building. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of the existing views that we've already added. So we're starting with a blank canvas. The very first thing I want to do is drag out a text view representing the top left element, which is a label for the base amount of your meal or of, of, of the amount that you're tipping on. So let's drag out a text view. Let's, I'll zoom in a bit just to make it a little easier to read. Uh, the first thing I like to do whenever I drag out a view is give it a meaningful ID name. So rather than the auto-generated one, I'll call this TV base label, TV standing for text view. And then this is a label, meaning a text view for the base amount. And then the text will make that be base. And you'll notice when we drag out the view, then there's an error saying that this view is not constrained. It only has design time positions. It will jump to position 00, zero which is at the very top left of our screen. And so what that means is we need to add constraints so Android Studio knows how to lay out this view. So what I did there is I added a top constraint. So I'm saying, how far should this text view be from the top of the screen? And instead of it being 0, I want it to be 32 pixels, or DP, from the top of the screen. And then I want it to be Let's make it 48 from the left end of the screen. So now you can see that the error went away because Android Studio does know how to position this element. Now we're going to do the same thing for each of the other text views on the left, left side of our app. So we'll have one more text view for the tip percentage, one more for the tip label, and one more for the total label. So I'm just going to drag out um, three more text views, and then we'll change these accordingly. So first, I'm going to just update the IDs. So this will be the tip percentage percent. And then let's make it 15% initially. The next text view will be the label for the tip, tip label. And the text will be tip. Oops. And then this bottom one will be a label for the total. Then it will be total. Okay, and all three of these have the same issue where the view is not constrained. And so by default, they're all going to be moved up to the top left of the screen, which we don't want, obviously. And so it, this comes down to having horizontal and vertical constraints for every element. Both the horizontal and vertical constraint will be based on this first element that we, we have already placed, the base label. So vertically, everything is going to be positioned according to the element above it. So for example, I'm going to have this one be 32 pixels below the base label, and then similarly for the others, 32 pixels below the label above it. So now you can see that you know if I move this, all the others, they move relative to that text view. Now for the horizontal positioning, we want all of these to be aligned to the right side of the top view. So if you go back to the diagram, you can see that you know there's a, a line that we can draw and all of them are aligned to that vertical line. And so in order to do that, what we basically want to communicate is the right end of this text view, this text view, and this text view should be aligned with the end of the base label. So I actually don't know how to do this in the design tab, but this is where we can go into the text tab. So uh, you can see the textual representation. We have four text views, base label, tip percent, tip label, and total label. And what we want to do is add 
a constraint which is saying the end of constraint end to end of and then give the id of the base label so the way you should read this is for this tip percentage text view the end constraint is going to be the same as the end of the text view for the base label and so if we go back into the design tab you can see that this did get positioned accord appropriately now and so we can copy and paste this into the other text views. Now, if I go into the design tab again, now you can see this nice alignment that we're, what we're looking for and all the errors have also gone away, which is exactly what we want. One thing I'll do just to clean this up a little bit is anything in the tools namespace means that this is something which is used for the purposes of rendering the preview, but does not actually have any impact on the, uh, on the actual runtime code. And so because we've actually constrained the horizontal and vertical position of each of these text views, this tools namespace actually doesn't have any value for us. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then one more thing I'll do is I, I'm pretty big on style. And so I like to have, be consistent with how I'm positioning and ordering the different attributes here and how I'm positioning the, uh, the caret symbols and things like that. So rather than doing it manually, one thing you can do is um, just use this action called reformat code. And so what I did to bring this up is just bring up the action menu. And for me, that's just tapping on the shift twice and then tap on reformat code. And you can see that it automatically changed all of this um, to be formatted consistently, which I, which I like a lot more. Okay, so now that we have these four text views, let's do some quick modifications to make it look a bit closer to what we have in our preview. The first thing I'll do is we're going to increase the font size for all of these to be 18 SP. That looks good. And then also we are going to make all of these um, have a text color of black. And then finally, this text view is a little bit different from the others because it's actually representing some value rather than just being a label. And so for that, we're going to bold it. Great, and so now you can see it, it already looks a bit closer to what we have here. Now we're going to drag in each of the widgets on the right hand side of the screen the first element is going to be an edit text. And so for that, you go into the text tab and you can see you have a bunch of different options for edit text. The one that we care about is a number, which is a decimal. Let me drag this out and I'll show you. There's nothing really special happening here. This is an edit text. The only thing that's changing between all of these different options of edit text is the input type. So the input type here is number decimal, which is what you want because we're dealing with currencies. So let's give this a meaningful, a meaningful ID. So we'll call this ET base this edit text for the base value. EMS refers to the width of your edit text. So in particular, it's actually in reality counting how many capital letter M's can you fit inside of the edit text. And the reason it's capital letter M is because M is the widest character that we have. And so this is saying how many of those could you fit in? And 10 is actually going to be a bit too much for us. We're going to make it eight. And the things on the right side of the screen, we actually want it to be even larger font. And so I'm going to make this 24 SP. And so you can see that that actually expanded it. So again, the same thing applies, right? We don't, we need to constrain this view horizontally and vertically. And actually, I don't want this to be constrained vertically to the parent. So I'm going to delete that top constraint. And I want everything to be positioned relative to the corresponding view on the left side. So each of the elements here will have a corresponding view on the right side. And that's how we'll be constraining these, these elements. So for the horizontal constraint, what we're going to do is make a left constraint on the edit text to the base label. And that's going to be 32 DP. So we create some distance. And for the vertical constraint, what we want is we want the baseline of this edit text to match up with the baseline of this text view. And so that is something that we'll do in the text tab. So just as a structural thing, the views up here are for on, on the left side. So I'm just gonna leave a comment for that. And then everything below here is going to be all the views on the right side. And what we want is we want to constrain this, the baseline, and we want the baseline of it to be equivalent to the baseline of the base label. So again, the way you should read this is the 
baseline constraint for this edit text is equal to the baseline of this element, which is the base label text view. And so now you can see um, graphically that you know the constraint layout is showing that there is a constraint between the base here and the base here. Going back into the completed screenshot, the next thing we'll do is drag in a seek bar, which is this widget, which allows the user to kind of scrub through and select a value. That we're going to go into the widgets tab and then select seek bar. I'll give this a, an ID of seek bar tip. And then we'll actually hard code in the width and height just because we know what we want that to be. So I'll make the width be 200 dp and the height will be 20 dp. In terms of constraints, the horizontal constraint is easy. We just want this to be similarly 32 dp away from the corresponding left hand label. In terms of vertical constraint, we want this to be centered vertically in proportion to the TV tip percent label. And so in order to do that, we're going to match up the bottom and the top of this seek bar to the bottom and top of the tip percent. So we can do that in the text tab. So we'll say the bottom is going to be the bottom of the tip percentage, and then the top is going to be the top of the tip percent label. And now that we have constrained it vertically and horizontally, we can get rid of the tools namespace. Let's see how that looks. Great. And you can see that, you know, in the graphically, we can see there's a top and bottom constraint and the horizontal constraint. The next thing is we want these two other text views for the tip amount and the total amount. So I'm going to go back into the common tab, drag out a text view, and then one more. So this is going to be TV tip amount. So text view tip amount. And we don't actually know the text ahead of time, right? That's going to be something we compute based on the base value provided and the tip percentage. So we can't, let's leave the te text empty. We can't know that in advance. But this is where the tools namespace comes in handy, right? Because we do want to see what this might look like. And so instead of having a normal text, let's fill in the tools text, uh, which is this wrench text, and we'll fill it in to be like $3.78. $3.78. So now we can kind of get a better sense of what this might look like. Similarly for the total text view. So we'll call this TV total amount. We don't know what the text will be ahead of time, so we'll delete that. But we do know we want some sort of preview. 1244. It doesn't really matter what the value is, just to kind of get a better sense of what this might look like. Constraining this is going to be similar to the others. So 32 from the corresponding left left hand side label. And we want these to actually have a larger font. I'm going to make it 24 SP, similar to the edit text. And now we want to vertically vertically constrain it. And we're going to match up the baselines of each of these to the corresponding left text view. So we'll say app baseline is going to be equivalent to the corresponding text view for the tip amount is going to be the tip label. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. But instead of it being relative to the tip label, of course, it should be the total label. And now that we have that, we can get rid of the tools namespace, which is positioning it for the purposes of the preview, because now we've actually constrained it. Great, so you can see it, it lines up properly. And now, also, now we don't have any of the errors showing in the component tree. So at this point, we're actually done with the basic implementation of the layout. Let's actually run the app to see what this might look like in an emulator. And you can see that Let's compare it to the completed screenshot. You can see it looks pretty similar. The next step is going to be actually reacting to changes that the user has made inside of the app. So as a wrap up, what we've done here is we've used a constraint layout and each of the eight views that we've put on the screen are constrained in a certain way, vertically and horizontally in relation to another view. And this is really powerful because now, for example, I could move around this view and everything will move according to that. That's a really nice way to lay out the structure of your UI. In the next video, we'll reference these views in our main activity to start making the app interactive.